Letter? Who from? Can't rightly say, sir. I was just to deliver it. Here. Thanks. No, sir. Thank you. And I truly hope I'll be of service again. Dearest. I suspect weighty affairs, rather than merely the wine festival, have drawn you to Tucson. Perhaps you'll find time to probe a certain matter in spite of this. I recently came across the mention of one Professor Moreau, a scholar in Beauclair, who conducted research into Witcher mutations. Though the details are rather murky, as is the location of the scholar's laboratory, his journal could contain more information. It lies buried with him in his tomb. I enclose a map I found in the book I happened upon. Though less than completely legible, I trust it will prove useful nonetheless. I felt this matter could prove of some importance to you. Thus I dispatched this letter without delay. Whatever you decide, please take exceedingly good care of yourself. Your Yen. Professor who studied Witcher mutations might actually be worth looking into. Guess it's a chance. Hmm. Inscriptions in elder speech. Salvation lies not in Dolmevde, but in our hearts. Glory be to Eldarin. Damn. Professor's journal's long gone. I guess somebody else found out about it too. Should look around, see if I can find something else. The professor certainly can't do much to help me with my search. Footprints, narrow and shallow. Somebody small, light. Woman, maybe? Wonder where they lead. Damn it, trail breaks off. Wonder if the grave robber learned more than I did. Hmm, won't learn anything else here. Map Yen sent me will have to do. Also, Epitaph mentioned both Elorin and Dolnevde, Valley of the Nine. Hmm. Site marked on the map's all wet now. Sonra Tour flows through there. Must be where the Valley of the Nine once lay. Need to explore the location.
having something like that myself. Need to find something to open it. Ah, did it. Hmm. Interesting as places go. Seems someone put a lot of thought into its design. Should look around. Hmm, impressive. It's just decoration, or...? Yeah, figured as much. Machinery goes, but how do I start it up? Preserved organs. Hope their donors weren't forced to give them up. Just need to pick an entry. of Yule, year 1102. Today I begin my great life's endeavor, one greater and more significant than any I have thus far undertaken, for it relates to me personally, to myself and my son. When 15 years passed, a beast of the forest assaulted me. A witcher came to my aid, saved my life. I could not know that for said salvation, I would in the end pay by relinquishing any say as to my own son's fate. Had I the skill to turn back time, I would have done so, and perished rather than surrender to the witchers my only son. But as it was, on the day when Jerome was taken, I swore an oath on my honor that I would recover my son. Today, following years of research and preparation, I have at last devised a device that allows me to study mutations. If the gods in their goodness grant me but a bit of favor, I shall find a way to reverse said mutations and restore Jerome to a normal life. So, Professor wasn't out to enhance Witcher mutations, wanted to reverse them. Wonder if he managed, and if there's anything in it for me. Observation 22. Despite applying a surfeit of toxic substances, significantly more than usual, the subject displayed no symptoms of overdosing. I believe this to be an effect of the mutations. Thus, 
a minor success. This mutation should allow Jerome better to tolerate toxicity. Observation number 30. The mutations do not set in at once. Curiously, they do not develop over a span of time. Rather, for a mutation to progress towards completion, the appropriate mutagen must be applied continuously. The subject does not bear this well, but I found a way to make the mutations less taxing. Invasive. To the mutagen base, I add the albumin of a mutated giant centipede egg. Stored in the Glasterarium, the eggs do not develop. Remain small. The eggs themselves are a sight to behold. Mutated, they are luminescent, emitting a wondrous glow. I can only hope my addition of the albumin will produce no significant side effects. Time will tell. Observation 58. Sometimes failure is the catalyst for success. I've discovered a method by which one type of mutagen may be transmuted into another through the addition of certain ingredients. This is a great day for science. In addition, I observed that today's dose of mutagens brought the subject to the brink of death. He then suddenly awoke, revived, his strength renewed. Not wholly, of course, but he did in a sense come back from the edge of death. Whether this is attributable to his mutations or to pure coincidence cannot be ascertained. I must conduct further experiments. Years of experiments. Research. Sacrifice. All for naught. I have failed to achieve my defined objective. Each mutation I applied to my subjects proved ineffective when applied to Jerome. What I meant to cure him of his witcherism, that which I meant to restore to him a normal life, only deepened his mutations, further augmented his speed and strength, rendered him yet more inhuman. It seems my son must remain a witcher forever. I have failed. The time has come to abandon this place. Return home to Lydia. She may yet deign to take me back. The contraption and mutagens I leave here. Let them wither and crumble. As did my dreams of regaining my son. Hmm. So the professor wanted to reverse the mutation's effects. Ended up deepening them. Stroke of luck for me, could profit from his failure. So, Professor tried to neutralize the effects of Witcher mutations. Only managed to enhance them, though. Used the albumens of giant centipede eggs as his mutagen base. Need to go on an egg hunt. Professor's mutagens might work on me as they did on his son. Now, well, time to find out.
Welcome home, sir. I am Barnabas Basil Fauti. By order of the Duchess, I shall serve you as Major Domo of Corfo Bianco. I previously served with distinction at the Nibli family manor and in Nazaire with Admiral Rompali, who, as you are certain to know, is an extraordinary demanding gentleman. Whoa, Barnabas Basil. One thing you ought to know, I'm not your typical landed gentleman. Truth be told, this is the first real property I've ever owned. Oh, in that case, you must leave it all to me. I shall organize, see to everything, and whip the house into order. I dare say this place will soon be the most prosperous vineyard around. Great. Can already see I'm in good hands. Vineyard comes across as a place with a rich history. Know who owned it before me? Baron Rossell, who went bankrupt, forcing him to sell the estate to the Duchess. The Baron, in turn, had purchased it from Monsieur Bolius of the Headsman, a truly colorful man of Ketweni origin. He was actually a Headsman? No, not him, but his great-great-great-great-grandfather. Indeed. Apparently, he was a common cut-purse who somehow secured for himself the post of Ducal Headsman in Beauclerc, went about his work with an exceptional penchant. They say he chopped off more heads than there are grapevines in the ducal vineyards. He never hesitated, not once, never sliced unevenly, never botched a job. For his exemplary service, the duke granted him a title and this estate. Monsieur Bolius, on the other hand, was an engineer in his younger years. Once retired, he settled here and took to producing wine. Sadly, Misfortune struck, and he lost his sense first of smell, then of taste. Additionally, he could not drink alcohol. His medic forbade it. Shame that. He gave up making wine? Not at all. He made even more of it. Began throwing wild balls to which he'd invite friends from far and wide, in order to treat them to his wine and delight in the fact that at least someone could enjoy it. It's the sort of man he was, Monsieur Bolius. Mind giving me a little tour de Corvo Bianco? Not in the least. Follow me, please. I think it would be practical to begin on the hill. Behold, sir, your estate in all its splendor. Pretty vast. Indeed. And now, sir, allow me to show you a handful of interesting details. Follow me, please. Been a major domo all your life? Yes, I come from a long line of major domos. My father was a major domo, as was my grandfather before him, as was my great aunt. In fact, she was the one to start the tradition. Great aunt? A hard woman. It is said that already as a child, she knew where she was going and went there. When she arrived in Beauclair, she signed on as a chambermaid at one of the vineyards and slowly worked her way up to Major Domo. She dragged the rest of the family up the same path. And welcome inside. On the left is the master bedroom. On the right, the dining hall and kitchen. Upstairs, you shall find the guest room, currently used for storage. Not a bad idea. At the moment, the house is only minimally furnished. Yet I believe we will, together, devise some innovative arrangements. A few paintings, for instance, would breathe new life into the abode immediately. With that, sir, you've seen the full lay of the land. Corfo Bianco is a beautiful estate. One must admit, time has taken its toll. If, if forgive me for being forward, but if you were to choose to invest a small sum towards its beautification, Consider me at your service on the matter. Think I'll take you up on that. Be sure to come and see you if I decide to do any remodeling. Mention the place could stand to be spruced up. Almost decidedly, sir. The question is where you would like to begin this rejuvenation. Been thinking about the outer walls. Maybe a fresh coat of paint or some patching. If I might dare to make a suggestion, why not start with a general renovation? I once oversaw such work at Admiral Rompelli's summer residence. The effects were simply breathtaking. 
Not only did the residents positively sparkle afterwards, but we also made room to display the Admiral's armor and weapons, of which he was a passionate collector. It's in your hands, then. Make the place shine. I shall get to work immediately. Within a day's passing, I shall have sent for the crew which rebuffed the Admiral's residence. They are the finest specialists around. Highly skilled at what they do, it shall not take them too long, I wager. Two days after they begin, your eyes will behold your residence in its refurbished, rejuvenated, beautified state. Is there anything, anything else you require, sir? Thanks. Gotta get back to my business now. See you soon. Renovations coming along all right? I am delighted to inform you we have completed our labors. You can now devote yourself to enjoying the vineyard's delights to the fullest. You must forgive me my temerity, sir, but I thought with all the work on Corfo Bianco completed and with the estate looking more beautiful than ever, it might be appropriate to commemorate the moment. Sure, why not? During the tidying that preceded the renovations, I came across a bottle of Sepramento, the 1250 vintage. I cannot say by what miracle it survived, but it is here, and we've course to open it today. And then he ran straight into the crowd, burning bouquet in hand. All thought it a part of the performance, so they only laughed, even when the decor began to catch fire. It was not until the flames engulfed Baron Mahefkin's beard that folk began to realize something was amiss and went to put out the fires. <laughs> Sounds like Monsieur Bolius and Madame Nina threw some first-rate balls here. It was so. Uh, in this regard, Baron Rossel was decidedly more reserved. So tell me, Barnabas Basil, what's the wine situation like here? Am I going to produce any this year? This year is out, I fear, sir. Last autumn, a fungus destroyed all the vines. Baron Rossell had new ones planted, but it will be some time before they start bearing fruit. Assuming that is, the fungus does not reappear. Hmm, that'd be bad. This Sepramento got me dreaming. It's amazing. Isn't it, though? Allow me to top you off, sir. There. Thanks. What a specimen. Skip. First, the exhibition of the Reginald Aubrey Monument will remain closed until further no notice. Closed? Why, we wrote an entire day to see it. You're a cheat, sir. And we paid good coin for the tickets. Give it back. Your tickets remain valid. You must Let merely wait patiently for the exhibition to reopen. Please disperse. The exhibition is closed. What's this about? Oh, Lepiota, give me strength. I can't bear this, please! I believe I've been clear. No presentation today. Oh, wait! Are you not that famous witcher, Geralt of Rivia? I believe I have work for you. What kind of work? Work related to the monument to Reginald Aubrey. The matter is a delicate one, but mind you, I pay well. Unless I can say no more at this stage. Interested? The statue. Just tell me, what's the problem? A picture's worth a thousand words. More, I dare say. Come with me. I'll show you. Here it is! Our pride and joy, Reginald Daubry. A giant among lovers. A poking, puncturing swordsman, and atop all that, an unrifled titler of harps and other organs. Mm -hmm. So what's wrong with it? How should I put this? It's lost its jewels. Somebody stole the testicles off a statue. No ordinary statue, mind you. The sole monument made using a cast of the great Reginald's own genitals. 
certified and authenticated. Sprung directly from his loins, they grant all who stroke them unparalleled virility. All who buy a ticket, that is. Thus, you must retrieve those stones. Got my attention. Now tell me about this Reginald, all you know. There's so much to tell. Legend has it he and the architect Faramont planned and laid out Beauclair. Hmm. Impressed already. In particular, Reginald took great pains to devise escape routes for lovers caught with their pants down. Literally and metaphorically. He later made frequent use of them himself. Not out of fear, mind you, but to avoid having to kill his rifles in duels. Any idea when the theft took place? It must have been mere hours ago. I guided the last group through the exposition quite recently. Stones were very much in place. Got any suspects? Considering the vast potency of Reginald's prized pouch, everyone's a suspect. Who would not want it for himself? Need to look around. Might find a clue or two. Do what you must, as long as you return grasping Reginald's stones. Without them, Beauclair's entire tourist sector faces trying times. Trying times. It will all work out. It must. Saw marks are straight and clean. Precision castration, I'd call this. Dried bloodstain. Don't worry, Reginald, don't worry. You shall be whole again soon. Piece of coat fabric caught on the nail. Heavy on cologne. Smell it'll lead me to the thief. Oh. Keep calm. Start no cross. What? Scent leads to this door. <laughs> oh, sorry to interrupt, I guess. Uh, this, this is not what it seems. <laughs> Word of honor. I, I, I tripped, rolled, uh, tumbled, and landed where she already lay. Psst! Shoes! That's not him! I, I swear, this is all an unfortunate coincidence, a series thereof. What? <sighs> That's not my husband. You mean, not... not your husband? Who are you, and why are you in my home? Out! Now, or I'll summon the guards! Calm down. Just here to talk. I... Uh, I believe we have nothing to talk about. Oh, we do. We do. Just to kick things off, you're in great form for a man your age. <clears throat> I eat well, start the day with a glass of wine. That preserves a body wonderfully. Interesting. Might try it. Say, ever heard of Reginald Dobry, his statue? <laughs> Everyone in the city's heard of it. Reginald's a Paragon, a national hero. That's so. You seem well informed, Hughes. Maybe you know who stole Reginald's testicles. I... Uh, I can explain everything. Um, this... Rosalinda! I know you're in there! You and that fancy pants of yours! Oh no, not him too. This really is not my day. Got you, you rogue! Prepare for a shellican skeleton! What the love's this? Rosalinta! One I could forgive you, but two at one time! Wait, got nothing to do with this. <laughs> Take me for a fool! I'll teach you to fish in another man's pond! Uh, got no time for this. Go home. Y yes That'll be best. I... I'm done here.
I don't know you, but that would have gone horribly for me had you not intervened. I thank you for saving my skin. Mm hmm So, time to talk. <sighs> Rosalinda, my dove, please allow us a moment. All right. I admit I stole the stones. And you will never believe it, but they work. Today, Rosalinda and I, well, three times and counting. Three times? Impressive. Isn't it? At my age. That's more than the entire last decade. All the same, you stole those stones and you gotta return them. Listen, perhaps we might strike a deal, hmm? Let me keep the stones. I'll pay you. Grant me this, I beg you. They... they've made me young again. No chance. Need to take the stones, pure and simple. But... but if you were to leave them with me for, for a day or two, uh, three at the most... Shit out of luck. Sorry. At the day's end... It's good I had a chance to use them at all. Here, take them. Thanks, and good luck. Actually think you'll do just fine without them. Well, have you recovered Reginald's family jewels? Yep, got them back. Lepiotis, luscious lips, it's them! It's really them! I hope this modest reward nonetheless conveys the extent of my gratitude. And look in on us tomorrow for the grand reopening. You shall stroke Reginald at no charge on the house. Reginald Aubrey has returned, not to be missed. Buy your tickets now, available from me alone. I thank you for your help. Leputa reward you with copious offspring. Reginald Dobry, the man with the donkeys. <laughs> Determination. He must have been breathtaking. Truly, I would so have loved to meet him. Ah, a statue like any other. A nude chap, nothing extraordinary. And the genitals? Overblown, most certainly. Can't believe I'm actually doing this. Them. You must be jesting. To stroke a stranger? Even if it is just a statue. Whereas a friend, him you would fondle. <laughs> ah, the serendipity. I'm so glad you're back. Master Witcher, what luck to happen upon you. Got work for me? New contract? Of the contract in question, you acquitted yourself beautifully years past, on your last sojourn in Beauclair. I was in a bit of a bind at the time, do you remember? Yet I swore a solemn vow to pay you in full one day. Guess it rings a bell. Sadly, you went on your way before I could settle matters with you. So, I took your coin and placed it in an account for safekeeping. Hmm. What kind of account? A savings account at Chanfanelli Bank. You need but walk in and withdraw. The sum must be rather substantial by now. Thanks. Head over there first chance I get. You shan't turn back a river with a rod. Sit, drink. 
there's a yes. patch in. Can I help you? Hmm. Welcome to Gianfinelli Bank, where we look after your coin as if it were our own, and the customer's always right. How might I be of service? Got an account here. Like to make a withdrawal. Naturally. Your name? Geralt of Rivia. Wait a moment, please, while I find the relevant record. I'm afraid I can't help you. Extraordinary circumstances, you see. There's a note in the records. The account holder is dead. That's inaccurate, as you can see. It's some kind of mistake. The note is clearly an error. To reactivate the account, you'll need permit 838. For more information, please go to window number one. All right. Where's window number one? Welcome to Chanfanelli Bank, where we look after your coin as if it were a bone, etc., etc. How can I help you, sir? I'd like to reactivate my account, so I need a copy of Permit A38. Wrong window, I fear. What do you mean, wrong window? I was told I'd get Permit A38 here. Please remain calm, sir, or you'll rupture a vein. So just tell me where I get this stupid document. Perhaps upstairs, in records, or downstairs in the archive? You must ask them, sir. Do just that. There's a catch. Yes? Hmm? Can I help you? Catch 22. Sorry, gotta get through. Hold there. What is this? Back off the queue, sir. Welcome to Chanfanelli Bank, where we look after your coin as if it were our own. And the customer is always right. How might I help you? This where I get permit A38? Naturally. Just hand me your Form 202, please. Form 202? Just what are you trying to pull? Sir, I'm not pulling anything. Just following procedure. Permit A38 can only be issued upon presentation of Form 202, as stated specifically in Ordinance N60. Please, go to window number one. <sighs> Just came from there. Never mind. Be back shortly with Form 202. That will do, sir. Jumping the queue. How dare you! You cut in front of me, sir! Did no such thing. Been standing here the whole time. Is that so? You know you're the third today to try that ruse. I will not stand for this. Just you wait, I'll teach you some manners. Go on, hit me. Oh, gentlemen, if you wish to raise a ruckus, do it outside. Outside, now! To the meat. Uncouth the wretches, which were cut in line for their poor I'm my own master to with the humble. Please can I help you? So, should I? Come on. Where the hell'd she go? Hair bomb made. Need to follow the scent. Could be the lead I need. She often goes deep in hock to put on a show. That little number would likely cost more than we make in a month. I truly no wonder who she got to lend her that much coin. So you see, 
She claims puffed sleeves will be in fashion next season. Excuse me. Got something I gotta huh? take care of at window you one. You cannot be serious. I too find it hard to believe. For... Excuse me. Can you not see what it says there? We're on our break. Celine, darling, sign this for me, will you? Oh, there you are. Listen, there's something We're I... on break. Ah, you try to be polite, it just never gets through. You must wait. They have the break now. So, what do you hope to get here, my friend? Permit A38. Though, guess I need Form 202 as well now. Form 202? Easy peasy. Certificate P. Now, that is a challenge. But, as we are both forced to wait, fancy a round of Gwent. See, you know this place pretty well. Must have taken care of a good amount of business. Oh, naturally, my friend. Naturally. Indeed, I've managed to work the system a time or two. You see, such things require finesse. Subtlety. Otherwise, you're stuck. I have seen them try everything. Magic, hypnosis, bribery, nothing works. Might as well go if nothing works. There's nothing I can do? Be kind, be pleasant. This and only this. The woman here, she sits at her window 12 hours each day without hearing so much as a good day from anyone. But muster up some flowers, some perfume. <laughs> well, you will resolve your matter lickety split. <laughs> right. Certainly worth a shot. Ah, good luck. Welcome to Chanfanelli Bank, where we look after your coin as if it were our own, etc., etc. How can I help you, sir? Need Form 202 to get a copy of Permit A38. Do you know that? Couldn't have told me? Wasted a lot of time because of you. Please, sir. There's no need to lose your temper. I thought it obvious and thus needed no stating. <coughs> the form will soon be ready. Name and surname? Geralt of Rivia. Let me find it, get on, Gemel. Here it is, Geralt of Rivia. Sorry, sir, I cannot issue Form 202. Excuse me? The applicant in question has been declared dead, officially. Now, do tell me, sir, how am I to enter that into the ledger? Got you some flowers, just to thank you for helping me with my file. Oh, but I... I shouldn't. For me? Really? Match the color of your eyes. Oh, my. You, sir, are quite the charmer. Ah, please, wait a moment. I shall fetch Master Cinfanelli. Perhaps he'll arrange something that excludes the paperwork. Uh, you tell him, Danny disturbed, but no, always some bugger who can't stand to wait. Plow me, who's this? Hearty greetings, Master Geralt. You haven't paid us a visit in eons. Been a bit busy, but I'm back now and I need your help with something. Of course. Now do tell, how can I help you? Got a problem with my account. Wanted to withdraw some coins, see, but... Nay, nee problem there. We'll get you paid up in a jiffy. I'm just gonna need to settle yon tiny wee trifle. Heard that already. Permit A38, among others. 
Oh, my hands are tied without them, Geralt. But I see you're a quick learner in the ways of banking. You'll get them in a heartbeat. Chen Finelli, no more excuses. Pay out my coin, now. Come on, Master Witcher, for why the ire? There's no need. We'll have it all for you. You just need to see the necessary documents. Got a document right here means a hell of a lot more than any of your forms or permits. Have a look. Uh, her enlightened highness, she's hired you. Mm-hmm. And as her personal emissary, I demand access to my account, right now. Uh, uh, aye, Master Witcher. This way. So how's the trade these days, Master this Witcher? Can Can't complain. Good for you, because in our neck of the woods, things are dark, dark shite. Wine sales are stuck in the muck and sinking deeper. It's the fucking wretched names, I tell you. Folk out with the duchy have me any notion how to say coat de blessure yes. and all that. It you twists concerned? their tongues in bloody knots. Makes them ashamed to ask for it. Done. Deposit box 256. Last gin on the right. What the hell's this, Chen Finelli? Box is empty. Well, uh, coins got to circulate. So when we learned you were dead, Master, we, uh, circulated yours. Purchased stocks, bonds, invested in a few vineyards. Before we knew it, there was hee-haw left in the box. Really ought to call it what it is. You robbed me, plain and simple. Nay, Master Witcher, never! I wouldn't dare! Oh, you'd dare. And now you'll answer for it. Open the gate. Master Witcher, I'll pay it all back, every red copper. I swear it on my nana's beard. Got a week, not one day more. You shan't regret this, I swear. I'll rustle it up, have it ready for you in seven days. Mm -hmm. See you then. Spare me a wee moment. What is it? Got your coin, sir. And a wee gift to thank you for the trust you showed. This blade's the Reckoner. It saved my arse a fair number of times. Thanks, Chan Finelli. We'll call it even. One last thing. I'd like to apologize for the whole minging kerfuffle. Good. Puss. Old frogs. In fact. Geralt of Vithia. Sir! Come to me, please. Approach. My eyes were not deceived. Yet so far south. You, sir, of all folk in all your fame. Mm-hmm. Me. South in all my fame. Ah, oh, I've heard so much. Why, when Master Dandelion tarried in Beauclair, not a day passed without him baying out a ballad in admiration of your teeds. <laughs> yeah, unwelcome little habit of his. But, what can I do for you? Ah, you see, my betrothed, Francois Le Goff, vowed in my honor to bring me the head of the horrid beast they call Gretore. Hmm, couldn't have gotten you a bouquet, some sweets in a bag. Witcher, sir, you jest. A love most true demands proof through heroic deeds dedicated to the heart's captor. But alas, Francois has been gone a fortnight. Thus I must plead with you to see what's become of him. Could you? Would you? This Grotore. Know anything else about it, mademoiselle? Judging by the name, guessing it lives in a cave. Yes. From which it prowls when hungry. By night, when all are asleep, it creeps into villages. Then, of a sudden, breaks open shutters, reaches inside and snatches babes from their cradles so quickly they've not the time to yelp. Hmm. Nocturnal. Long prehensile arms. Intelligent. 
Francois claimed he would cut the filth down in a snap, but he's been gone so long. Will you help, sir? I cannot sleep. I fear this worrying will be the death of me. Do my damnedest to get your fiancé back safe and sound. Just, uh, mind telling me where to look for him? I forget you come from afar and do not know our land. They say Gratouri has its lair in the caves at the foot of the Gorgon Hills. That close to the city? Telling me no bold souls have ventured out to defeat the beast? Quite the contrary. Plenty have, but none's returned. My concern is well founded. I see. All right. High time I set off. me off to death, Drifter. What do they call you? What's your crest? Speak! Name's Geralt. No crest, no motto, no plumed helmet even. I'm a witcher. Francois Le Goff, I presume. Your betrothed sent me. See, you've been gone a while, so you've got her worried. I... well, indeed, for... for... Grotore is a most fearsome beast. I must prepare properly for battle. Mm, by napping outside the cave for a fortnight? I have tarried a bit, true, but the delay is done. My word I gave, thus the beast shall die. Wouldn't happen to need any help, would you? Hmm. I, I don't know. After all, I did swear a solemn oath to... Deposit the beast's head at your beloved's feet. No mention of you killing it all by yourself, though. All in all, uh, I suppose you're right. <sighs> we must fight side by side then, for honor. To be the one to lop off its head. We gotta kill it first. Mm, strange. No sign of Gratori. Perhaps we should turn back? If there's no beast, there's no beast. Damn shame, but we tried. Not so fast. Let's take a look around. Bones. Small skull. Fontanelle's not completely closed. Infant. About a year, maybe. Various sundries, some tools. Gratori must have taken them from its victims. Cradle filled with children's shoes. Have I ever seen a collection of this grotesque? Impressive. You'd think you were in a winter garden.
by my troth. The damned brute was sturdy. I... I'm grateful, Witcher. You aided me greatly. Why the challenge? Couldn't have gone after something less formidable? A werebub, for instance? Uh, why? For... For the beast must match in ferocity the very ardor of my affection and... You're blushing, Sir Knight. Oh, it's my betrothed. The thing is, she champs at the pit to get married when we've not known one another for two years. So I vowed to slay Gratori. Thought it would buy me time to battle such a beast why it could take months. Mm -hmm. Especially at the rate you were going. High time you returned to Beauclair, brave knight. Nay, oh, nay. The head of this beast is a trifle, wholly inadequate to express the love I harbor for my betrothed. The world awaits. Uh, to honor her, I shall cut down another, more terrible beast. Take my advice. Grab the damned head and cut the shit. You are blind to my predicament. Once I return, I will have no recourse. She'll drag me to the nearest shrine while... Shut up and listen. Crests, scrap metal armor, swooning damsels. All that's nothing to do with hunting monsters. Witches work. Damn hard, dangerous, and thankless work that you're just not cut out for. Want to prove your valor? Go back to your betrothed and be honest. Tell her you're not ready to marry. You do not mince words, Master. In Tucson, one might demand satisfaction upon trampled ground, for a lesser slight. Yet, there is truth in what you say, I cannot deny. I survived with my life by a hair. It is time... time I returned home. I was to get a new quaff from Jean de Lettepic. Got good news, madam. As do I. Francois has returned. We marry in a week's time. <laughs> Prenuptial teachings at the temple tomorrow. Dress fitting the next morn, then a tour of the wedding venue. I have never been so happy. Hmm. Congratulations, I guess. Wish you happiness, both of you. And good fortune to you on your path. Your reward, master. And Godspeed.